This is shuttle launch control, T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. At the present time, the astronauts are on, in their van on the Kennedy Parkway, proceeding towards the pad. Uh, at the same time, launch director George Page has just made a check with the weatherman to ensure that the weather is satisfactory for launch. He got back the, the information that, yes, we are go for launch, and also at our uh, sites at White Sands and at Edwards Air Force Base. The temperature at liftoff is expected to be about 72 degrees. The relative humidity, humidity 65 percent, and the winds uh, will be acceptable coming from the southeast. The relative humidity is one of those important parameters in the weather primarily because it has to do with the possibility of ice buildup on the tank. The low humidity of 65 percent is acceptable and uh, we do not expect to have any problems with frost or ice on the external tank, uh, which is stable at the present time and has been for more than an hour now with in the replenish mode. This means that just very small amounts of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are being added to the tank uh, as it sits there uh, at the flight levels. Stand by, 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. Just a little over five minutes remaining before we come out of this built-in hold. At the present time, the astronauts have arrived on the pad surface. Their truck or astrovan is parking, and they should be getting out of it and moving toward the elevators, which will take them up to the level of the orbiter access arm, the 195-foot level. The, in the meantime, uh, on the pad, everything is in ready. Uh, there has been a go given for ingress of the astronauts into the orbiter. Uh, during the time that they were suiting up and uh, leaving the ONC building to come out there, a number of things were also done at the pad uh, in addition to preparing the orbiter to receive them. For instance, the liquid hydrogen duar or the white room, the, the very clean area uh, in which they will be uh, prepared for entry into the orbiter. Uh, they're just entering into the white room at the present time. Everything in readiness for them to get into the orbiter. Astronaut John Young will be the first in, and uh, uh, in the tradition of the Navy, the other night when we had to scrub the, uh, the launch, uh, he was the last to leave also. Uh, the suit technician uh, taking a look uh, at the uh, the suits and getting the helmet ready to place on his head. The first thing to go on uh, will be the uh, the Snoopy cap, black Snoopy cap that uh, he puts over his ears and is used for comfort inside the helmet. He's now putting the his helmet uh, in place over his head, uh, as is pilot Bob Crippen. They will not be uh, completely locked in place and checked until after they are into the uh, the orbiter seats, uh, and they are hooked up to the uh, the life support system. There, the visors are kept up uh, 
All of the lines are checked to make sure that they are in the right places, that there's nothing that's pinched by the uh, putting the uh, helmet into the socket. And uh, they're preparing now for their ingress into the orbiter. Uh, getting into the orbiter is not the easiest thing. You don't walk just upright through a door. It's a fairly small opening in which they have to uh, crawl on their hands and knees over a little metal bridge uh, which protects the doorway uh, from anything uh, dinging it or uh, uh, otherwise bothering the seals that uh, are around the door that uh, help maintain the, the cabin pressure during their uh, 54 and a half hour mission. At the, uh, the present time, both astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen have their helmets on. Uh, John Young uh, just about to get into the orbiter Looks like he was gesturing, uh, is it okay? And yes, it is okay. He is crawling through the doorway now into the orbiter. We'll be walking along the, uh, the platforms, which are really along the, the back wall of the crew compartment and moving up to his seat. Uh, pilot Bob Crippen gives a little wave uh, to the closeout crew in the white room, which won't be able to follow him in there. Part of that crew, though, is inside astronaut Lauren Shriver, who's one of the support astronauts, uh, helping with the ingress. Uh, they are inside of the orbiter now and uh, getting ready to get into their seats. Uh, swinging up into those seats, which of course are lying in a horizontal position rather than a, uh, a vertical position that seats normally are in, is not uh, the easiest thing to do. They have a, uh, just a couple of little toe holds and hand holds, and they swing themselves up into there. And the next step will be the connection of their biomedical sensors, uh, their headsets uh, to the comm side of the uh, uh, circuits, and their life support systems to the, uh, the air side. They use a uh, sort of a normal breathing mixture of air uh, unlike the pure oxygen that was used during the previous manned spaceflight programs. So astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen are on board, everything going very smoothly as we move toward pickup of the countdown at the T-minus two hour and five minute point. This is shuttle launch control. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control. The clock has started, and we're at T-minus 2 hours, 4 minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. Astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen uh, being placed in their suit. The white room crew is in the process of uh, wiping down the, the hatchway, which will be closed up to ensure that they get the absolutely best uh, seal that they can there. Uh, later on, that... Uh, cabin will be pressurized, the seals will be checked to and checked uh, for integrity to ensure that uh, they are holding properly for the flight. One of the first things that happens here as we once more begin the count is that the main propulsion system helium tanks will be brought up to their flight pressure of 4,400 pounds per square inch. Everything going smoothly, the leather, weather looking good, uh, all aspects of the shuttle looking good as we prepare for a liftoff at 7 a.m. this morning. We're the countdown at T minus two hours, three minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. OTC, 
DDR PLTs on the comp. Alright, how y'all doing? This is shuttle launch control at T minus one hour, 58 minutes and counting. A little bit of chatter occurring as the crew hooks up their comm uh, equipment to the orbiter and begins to talk with the, the people that they need to oh, do their checks with. Drivers coming on. The, one of the first things that was said uh, was by the orbiter test conductor for Rockwell, Chuck Hannon, who said that we hope we give you a better show tonight. And uh, Bob Crippen came back and uh, said we hope and, uh, we give you a better now. show. Uh, they also were told that uh, they hope they didn't mind stale sandwiches, that they hadn't had a chance to change out the box lunches which are on board. Uh, astronaut Crippen said we've brought along a new turkey sandwich. Everything going smoothly uh, as we go through the steps necessary to get us to a launch at 7 a.m. this morning. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 43 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. At the present time, the cabin leak check is in work and apparently proceeding along satisfactorily. That is not completed until approximately the T-minus 30 minute point in the countdown. The closeout crew is finishing up the, the work which they need to do at the level uh, of the hatch that gives access to the astronauts, and then the they will prepare the swing arm to be moved back at the T-minus 7 minute point in the countdown. The only other arm which has to be moved prior to liftoff is what's called the Gox vent arm or beanie cap. Uh, this is used for uh, gaseous nitrogen uh, which is uh, sprayed on the, uh, the very top of the external tank to try and prevent any buildup of ice at that point where the liquid hydrogen vents, uh, liquid oxygen vents from the external tank. Both of those tanks have been at their flight mass uh, for some time now and in the replenish mode where we add just enough to the tanks to keep them at the proper level as some of them uh, of the liquids uh, boil away. Uh, it's just natural that they should boil away because of the very, very cold temperatures of them. Liquid Hydrogen, for instance, boils at minus 423 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. At the present time, the closeout crew up in the, uh, the orbiter access arm uh, is making sure that the thermal protection system uh, is in the proper configuration there. They have to actually screw some plugs into it, uh, which are threaded uh, into the, the TPS, which is on that hatchway uh, and was put on here in the orbiter processing facility uh, just several months ago. At the present time, everything moving along very smoothly in our countdown. The uh, booster test conductor has uh, asked to calibrate the solid rocket motor pressure transducers. These are the instruments which are necessary to provide the information which separates the solid boosters during the flight. 
uh, once they have burned out. So it's essential that those pressure transducers be working properly to prevent any premature separation. The pre-flight alignment of the inertial measurement unit is underway, and that will be completed at the end of the 20-minute build-in hold, which comes up at the T-minus 20-minute point. The range safety officer has reported that the Eastern Test Range Command Test is complete, and Bob Crippen is about to begin the auxiliary power unit water boiler pre-activation. At the present time, everything going along very smoothly in our countdown. The count presently stands at T-minus 40 minutes, 23 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 35 minutes and counting. At the present time, the closeout crew is finishing up the various preparations necessary on the orbiter access arm. They have just swung away uh, the portion of that arm which provides the seal between the very clean room atmosphere of the white room uh, and the orbiter. It has a uh, sort of an inflatable seal that uh, presses against the orbiter just slightly to ensure that uh, we not get any uh, undue amount of, uh, of dirt or contamination uh, from wind blowing things up there uh, in the white room. We try to maintain the integrity of that because that is the area that people pass through into the vehicle. 